All right, we got the EG4 6000 XP. We're gonna do some uh, load test and do it on basically 120 and see what kind of surge this thing can take on one leg, you know, because it's 3,000 on each leg, 6,000 total. They say this thing will do a, a 12,000 watt surge, but we're gonna see if that's only for 240 or, you know, if you just have 120 on and you got everything pulling off of one leg, how much can it pull and then what kind of surge it can take? You know, it's not gonna be a perfect test. I just have a few different things I'm gonna try. Basically, I have a saw that I'm gonna put on it and a shop vac. And I'm gonna use a meter here, put it on there and put it on max amps. And so we're gonna see what the surge is. So let's go ahead and bring you over here. So basically, I'm just gonna hang it right here on the hot for the 120 plug. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and get my stuff set up and I'm gonna try to start the saw and the shop vac at the same time and off camera yesterday when i was doing some testing i was able to get it up to 41 amps for 120 which is about 5k so off of one leg i think that's pretty good we're gonna see what we can get it with this time on camera all right as you can see i got everything rearranged got a saw right here and the shop vac right here so i can reach both of them and right now so the shop vac has the highest uh amperage so as you might be able to see there it's 32.1 amps i got such a glare i can't barely see out here but 32.1 amps so that's already a pretty good surge that 32.1 amps that's gonna be about 3852 watts off of one leg of this inverter which is rated for 3000 so let's see if we can get a little higher by starting them both at the same time All right, so right now, let's see if you can see this. Let me get this thing to focus in. Right now, 40 amps. So not bad so far. Of course, it's not gonna be a perfect test as I don't have a perfect test set up. I just have stuff I have around here that I'm trying to use. And sorry about this weird sun. So hopefully you can see me good. But we'll go 40 amps times 120. That's 4,800 watt surge, you know, for that one leg and the inverter didn't turn off. So pretty good so far. So we are getting close to being up near that 6,000 watt surge that they claim on each leg to make it 12,000 total. And of course, I do have uh, some solar coming in. So I'll go ahead and show you my little setup I got. So you should be running this off a minimum of two batteries. I have one battery set up, got an inverter, got a 50 amp plug, and I got a 30 amp plug, 240. Then I got a 120 plug over here. Uh, 20 amp basically i got four 455 watt panels just laying against the side of the house then i think i have what do we got four uh, six or seven i think i got seven of these 305 watt panels just laying on the ground so definitely not a good angle for them or anything so we definitely shouldn't kick out uh the inverter because of the battery going out for um pulling too much discharge you know the discharge should stay below the 100 amps that it's rated for and be fine since I'm bringing it in right now, let's see what the, let's go ahead and look on the app just to make it easier and see what I'm pulling in. And as you see right here, I'm pulling in 2,292 watts of solar. So about, let's just say 3,000. So I can definitely get the rest out of the battery for a temporary surge. You know, try to get this thing maxed out to see what we can pull. So now that we pulled the 40 amps, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start charging my car you know, I'm gonna set that thing down to about 10 amps, start it charging. So I already have about 2,300 watts coming out of this inverter. And then I'll try to surge on the one leg. And it's definitely gonna be way over what it's rated for, for the 6,000 per leg. And we'll see if the inverter kicks out or if it keeps running. Cause that surge is only temporary for this. Cause I think both of those run at the same time are probably about 2,500 watts. But that initial surge, you know, it's close to 5,000 watts. Let's go plug in the car and get this thing going. All right, just started the app recording. And as you can see, I got 2,351 watts going out. 
you know, to my car. So basically about, I think it's 39%, you know, of, of what the rated capacity is right now. So we're gonna go ahead and try to surge to see if it kicks out the inverter. All right, got 38 amps that time, and it's still running, didn't kick out. Thirty-eight amps, highest I've seen so far. All right, thirty-eight amps times one twenty, so that's uh, forty-five hundred and sixty. And then what do we have? Twenty about twenty-three hundred and fifty or something like that. Eleven seventy-five. So we're gonna take that 38 amps times 120, it's 4560. And then we're gonna to add to that 1175, which is already half of what that was. That's 5,735 watts coming out of that one leg. So that's pretty close to maxed out. So I definitely think this thing does have a 12,000 watt uh, surge capacity. Even though I didn't surge it to 12,000, I got the one leg up, the, the 5,735. So we got this thing close to the max capacity. We had at 5,735 watts on the one leg, you know, so each leg would be doing 6,000 because it's 12,000 rated. So we'll go ahead and turn the car up even more, and we're gonna see if we can get the inverter to kick out by going well over 6,000 watts. All right, I went and set my charger to 16 amps. Let's, so let's go ahead and see what the inverter's pulling now. 3,809 watts coming out. So if we do that 5,000 watt surge, so if we go ahead and do that surge, it's gonna be about 6,900 watts coming out. So let's go ahead and do that surge again on the 120 side to see if we can get this inverter to kick out or if it stays on. Let's go ahead and reset my meter over here. Let's see what the max amps goes to. And the car's charging, everything's going. 30 amps still. So that was 29.5 amps on that one, and it's still going. 30 amps on that one. So with the 30 amps, it kicked out. So at 29.5 amps, it, it was good, and the thing didn't fall out. Then I did it again with the 30 amps on that leg, and it kicked the inverter out. So that time on that leg, you know, if my meter's right, saying it's 30 amps, it kicked out at about 5,500 um, watts. Let's go ahead and see what it did fall out for. Let me go ahead and start the screen recording, just to make sure it was the inverter and not the battery. So you can go in here to, on the app and go to monitor, and it says EPS overload. So it was the output of the inverter overload. It wasn't a battery. The battery didn't kick out or anything like that. So we kind of got to the max of it. If you're only running just the one leg, you get the surge up to about 5,800 that I saw. And I didn't go over that, so I didn't have the equipment to do it. So who knows how high it would have really went. But when I have something else going, I already had 3,800 watts coming out of the inverter. And then I got the surge, you know, up to around 5,500 watts on the one leg and it kicked the inverter out, you know, but with that 5,500, let me see here. So total, that would have been, that would have been about 7,400 watts coming out of the inverter, but that's just cause the thing, it was uneven, you know, I'm sure I could get a lot more load out of it. You know, if I had an even load on both sides, I guess I could do another 120 side, you know, and try it like that, do some more testing. But this is just what I have right now set up. So what do you guys think about this, you know, surge capacity? You know, I saw that 5,800 watts on the one leg. I think this thing's gonna be fine when I have three of these, you know, in parallel to run my whole house, because I'm running my whole house on three grow watts who are not even rated at this capacity. These are 6,000 a piece, the grow watts are 5,000. This thing's been working pretty good. If you're interested in any of this stuff, I'll have links below to this inverter you know, Signature Solar's been having all kinds of sales going on with Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Cyber Week and all that stuff going on. So if y'all interested in that, you go ahead and hit those links up. It does help out the channel and I do appreciate it. Some of y'all have went on there 
whenever you made your purchases and went through my link. And I do make a small commission on that. And it helps me to make more videos and buy more stuff and get to play with stuff, basically. So if you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and thanks for watching.